In this video we're going to look at some further options for editing atlas maps, including how to turn them into date banded maps with different symbols for different time periods. As always when working with an atlas map, to before you can start adding or editing things to the map you have to make the feature details visible, which you can either do by clicking on the purple tick or by going to the view menu and choosing show feature detail. If we open up the feature list, you can see, as before, all the various parts of the map, including all the data subjects, which are the species list, and the data object, which is the thing that draws the dots on the map. A standard atlas map will just have one data object, so that all your records for any given species will be drawn in the same way with the same symbol. Because we want to have different symbols for different time periods, we're going to need some extra data objects in this atlas map. And to get those, we need to go to the Edit menu and to the Insert section. Among the various things that you can insert onto a map, we're going to go down to Data Object, and click on there. And this gives you various choices of things that you can insert into your map. Some of the ones towards the bottom of this list are not terribly relevant to plant recording, although they may be useful if you deal with other groups, but it's the date options that we want to look at first. Now on my example map here, what I want to do is to differentiate between all the records from before year 2000 and all the records from year 2000 onwards. And there is a data object set up, or two data objects set up, that will allow us to do that. We have to add them both separately, so I'll start off by choosing the year before 2000. And I have to go through the choices about what type of symbol I need. So I'm going to stick to having a tetrad. I'm going to keep it as a square. Mapmate comes up with a caption for this feature, which you can leave as it is, or you may wish to adjust it to make it a little bit clearer. Once you're happy with that, you can click on OK. And something has happened. We can see that the dots have changed shape on our atlas map, or some of the dots have. And if we resort our type column by clicking on the heading where it says type, we can now see that we've got two data objects, one showing all records, one showing records before 2000. We now need to add in the records from 2000 onwards, so it's back to edit, insert, data object, and this time we don't want before 2000, we want 2000 onwards, so year greater than or equal to 2000. And we'll make this one red. And once again we'll just change the title and click on OK. And we have some other symbols on our map, and we can now see that there are three data objects. As with any of these features, you can turn these on or off, so we could turn off the ones we've just added and go back to seeing all the records or we can put those on, and in fact we no longer really need to have all the records showing as a separate symbol, so we can either turn that one off, or we could in fact get rid of it altogether by right-clicking on its name and delete, and that just leaves us with two categories, records from 2000 onwards, records before 2000. Now at the moment both of our data objects are drawn at the same size, and the only difference between them is the colour, and it's worth double-checking the order here, um, the way things have come in on this particular map, the more recent records are being drawn on top of the older records, which is probably what you would want in most cases, so that the more recent ones take priority and are shown on the map over the, and above the older ones. If you want to, you can arrange the symbols so that you can see where the different data objects overlap. So, for instance, if we wanted to be able to see the older records and also the newer records on top of the older records, one way of doing that is to change the style setting. So if we go to our more recent records, right click on style and change it to a cross, we can now see that all the recent records are shown as a red cross and all the older records are shown as a black square. On this particular map there are no overlaps, but if we did have records from both time periods in the same square you would be able to of course see both symbols one on top of the other. So let's just change to a different species so that we can demonstrate that. And here we have a map where all the recent records of Meadow Brown since year 2000 are shown as red crosses, the older ones are shown as black squares, 
and in a couple of cases we have a square that was recorded both before 2000 and since 2000. So we now have our date banded map with both date categories showing the way we want them. The next thing we might like to do is to add a key to this map so that other people looking at it will know what the symbols mean. Keys can be added from MapMate's edit menu, but to add them, or indeed to add any text to a MapMate map, the first thing you have to do is to draw a box telling MapMate where you want the text to appear. So we'll put our key up over towards the top right corner and we'll click and drag the box where we want the key to be. And when you let go, you get the menu from which you should choose Keep This. And that tells MapMate to retain that box in its memory, so that when we now go to Edit, Insert, Keys, and we'll choose Key, MapMate puts it more or less in the place where you drew the box on the screen. What also usually happens, as has happened here, is that the text comes in at a rather large size. So we need to uh, change that, and we can do that by going back to the feature list. When you add a key to MapMate, it brings it in as a number of key items for each thing that appears in the key, and they should be somewhere in your type menu. Just click on the type heading if you can't see them. And having found your key items, you'll see that they've got a size assigned to them in kilometres. In fact, this is actually controlling the size of the font at which the key appears on the screen, and we can adjust it in the normal way from the feature list by hovering over the size column, right-clicking, and there are various preset measurements here, but let's choose the user-defined one, and that allows us to type in the size that we want our key item to be. Let's try doing it at 3,000 metres. You have to type it in as metres, even though it's going to display it as kilometres. And you press Enter. And that seems to be a more sensible size, so we'll adjust the other one as well. Right-click over where it says 10 kilometres here. Go to User Defined and type in the measurement that you want. So we now have a map and we have a key. One other problem that I've just seen with my key is that I've mistyped the word onwards. So um, that needs correcting. And also, I'd just like to tidy it up a bit so that the two key items are closer to each other. The misspelling is easy to deal with. We just find the key item again in our feature list, right-click over its name, and we have an option to rename, which will allow us just to correct that spelling mistake and press Enter. And in fact, the reason the spelling mistake is there is because I got it wrong with the data object as well. So I'll correct that while I'm here. Right-click, rename correct the spelling and press enter. So that sorted that out. So the next thing to do is to move the key item to the place that I want it to be. And this is a little bit more fiddly. To move key items or other pieces of text on a MapMate map, you use the right-click menu. So if we go back to the map and right-click, you have a choice to move selected text. So I'll try clicking on that, and it tells me that I must select one text feature in order to be able to move it, which I didn't do. So in order to select the text feature, we have to go back to the feature list, unselect the data object or anything else. You don't want to have anything selected to start with. Then you should find the key item that you actually want to move, which in our case is records before 2000, and just click anywhere over that so that it's highlighted with that bluish line. So we do now have some text selected. We can close the feature list again, go back to our main map and right click, move selected text and this time it will let us do it. You'll see that as you move the cursor there's a little box that goes with it and that box is telling MapMate where you want the text to move to. So we want to bring our records before 2000 up a little bit and I'll, I will try and line it up as precise as I can with the text above it and when I'm happy that that's where I want it to go I right click again and drop text here and it moves the text up. So that all works quite nicely. The only problem you may find with this is when you come to print the maps, depending on which method you use for printing them, the anything outside the map box can get left behind, so MapMate doesn't always include any text that is around the edges of the box other than the title. If that's an issue for you and you do need to print your map out, then what you'll need to do is to create your key actually inside the map area somewhere, probably over a bit of the county background that you're not actually using. So we've got our date banded map and we've got a key next to it. 
There's various other things that you can add to a map from the edit menu and we'll just see one or two more of them. We're going to add some text annotations to this map and as we saw with the key the first thing we have to do is to draw a box and keep this so the map mate knows where the text wants to be. Go to our edit insert menu and this time I'm going to try inserting some text and there's various choices we have here. A text annotation just allows you to type in a bit of text that will then appear on every map in your atlas. There's also a date stamp option which we will try first of all. We'll click on there. Once again it's put it in at a rather large size so back into our feature list. This one is, has now appeared as a date stamp in our feature list with that large size again that we can right click user defined bring it back down to 3000 that matches our key and having added that text item to one of our mapmate maps if we now choose a different species you'll see that the text item remains there it will appear against every map in your atlas and this particular text item this date one just shows today's date so that any time you go to print out or copy one of these maps it will always show you the date at which the map was created so that can be quite useful there's some more things we can add so draw another box keep this edit insert back into text again and at the bottom of this list there's something called query based annotation which sounds a bit mystifying but it's very a very useful thing to add to a map if we click on that it comes up with one of our dialog windows where you can choose from various options in this drop down list now there's quite a lot of things to choose from if you scroll all the way down this list but we'll just look at one or two examples and at the top of the list we have the number of records for the species that we're currently looking at so if we click on there there are various boxes that get filled in automatically and I'd recommend you leave those as they are you can change the color if you need to but you can always do that at a later stage as well so it's usually best just to leave that as it is click on OK and we have the usual thing of having to change the size back into the feature list so here is our text query it's called an auto summary type of um, feature and it has a size which is too large again into the user defined back to 3000 and there it is and it's telling us eight records what that actually means is that all the dots that are showing on the current map are based on eight records in the database if we change species again this time this particular map is based on 25 records so in other words what this is doing is querying the actual data that's showing on the map at any given time and if you add records to your map through further data entry not only will all the dots get updated but this figure will update itself as well so some of those query based annotations can be quite useful things to add to a map it all adds to the interest and helps to explain what's actually appearing on the maps that you're using in MapMate